I am delighted to welcome onto stage with me Tim Vanderhoek, Chief Executive Officer and Co-Founder of Viant, and Ja Dizau, Vice President of Programmatic at Group M. Please come on up on stage. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so I can't wait to be a student of this conversation because I think there's so much to learn about the evolution of programmatic and how technology and new um, autonomous technology specifically is really changing what programmatic is today. Um, you know, I, I think back to the early days of programmatic and, and even though it's been around for a while, it still feels like it's the early days. It's brand new. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, but yet technology is really changing what, what programmatic can do and, and being able to really use that at scale for marketers to grow their business. Um, so really excited to have both of you here with us today. Thank you so much. <laughs> So we'll dive into the conversation. Um, the programmatic ecosystem is growing at a rate that's almost impossible for humans to navigate. Um, and soon it will be. So can you provide an overview of the growing programmatic landscape and um, answer if you know, the current programmatic technologies have, been, have reached a plateau yet? Tim, we'll start with you. Sure. I don't think there's such a thing as a plateau in programmatic. As the internet expands, programmatic keeps expanding with it. And so if we think about where we started from, it was banner ads on remnant webs, a remnant inventory on long tail websites. Most premium inventory wasn't available programmatically and a banner ad was the only format you could uh, really buy through. And it was primarily for direct response advertisers, you know, fast forward to today, the internet has expanded to digital out of home, streaming TV, and there's so many locations that you can programmatically or electronically purchase that ad spot and then measure the results. So as the internet keeps expanding, programmatic follows it and, and advertisers follow it. Um, and, and so now the inventory access, the ability to purchase uh, inventory electronically, I think is plateaued. I think we're running out of places to integrate. But more and more, as the internet grows, there will, be, there will be new locations. So now I think the big thing is, how do we apply a lot of the machine learning, artificial intelligence on top of these platforms to really drive outsized performance from what humans could do alone? Ja, what are, what are your thoughts? What, what, how do you view the current programmatic landscape and, and have, have we plateaued? I have the same opinion. So it's the golden time for the digital advertising and programmatic advertising. Targeting the right people with the right message on the right media at the right time is always a science. So I think a lot of you hear the um, um, quote, um, half of my advertising spend is, a waste, is wasted, and the trouble is I don't know which half. So this was a quote half maybe several decades ago. What do we think is it's not anymore because we have AI-based advanced technology to make precise targeting for our audiences. So we have seen a lot of advanced technology developing during the last decade. So this is very exciting. For example, even Group M, we have Copilot and the Choreograph for future-proof audience-based buying. On top of that, we are seeing traditional media, previously like TV, like out of home, um, previously, all based on human-based buying. Now it's all digital. We have digital out of home, programmatic, programmatic out of home, and we have a CTV buy with a with um, automatic audience targeting as well. So all of them are very exciting, and they are all empowered by AI-based machine learning, which makes our advertising more efficient and more meaningful for our clients. I mean, big terms like. AI and machine learning and programmatic, um, it's a lot to kind of like think about how, how that may all work. Um, Tim, how is, how is Viant tackling uh, autonomous advertising and, and what's your blueprint? What, what are the you know, technology that you're building and, and what does that actually look like? Yeah, well, what is autonomous advertising? I mean, to be blunt, it's about no human involvement that the computer really plans a campaign, buys a campaign, measures a campaign, optimizes a campaign. And I think that's really where step one is all on the media planning, buying, and optimization. What, what 
humans do each and every day. I think the need has never been bigger. If you look at how big, uh, how many choices there are for a human to select, you can't actually make the right one as a human. If you think of the number of websites, mobile apps, streaming TV apps that you could place your ad, and then combine that with the number of data partners and audience segments. In our DSP alone, there's 270,000 audience segments to choose from, to choose from, and there's 25 million websites. If you're just looking at desktop only, add the number of apps, it's impossible for a human out of that amount of selections to be able to pick out the correct one for their, for their uh, advertising partner. So what we try and do is basically take the guesswork out of media planning. When you onboard first party data, it's really matching up and letting the, letting the software actually decide what websites, what apps, what audience segments are relevant for you. And then ultimately determining what's the correct CPM I should try and bid to, to win this impression. So not to mince words, I know it makes everyone very uncomfortable, but the whole goal of autonomous advertising is that so people don't have to operate the DSP. You no longer need traders. How tough is it if you work at an ad agency to recruit programmatic traders today? It's a defined skill set. You have to get certified in each platform, and no one has the time to be able to learn new platforms. So for us, it's about taking the human need out of it, not to scare anyone. Humans will be needed in other areas of advertising, but determining which websites, which apps, and which audience segments we don't think needs to be there today. And I'll talk a little bit more about the exciting, but I think what's relevant today, machine learning, automatically doing media planning, buying, and measurement that's there. And I, and I think it's the trust factor by humans with the computer that's not there yet today. So where, where are we today in what, what we can do? Mm -hmm. And how far out are we from being able to have you know, a fully autonomous advertise, programmatic advertising ecosystem? I think we're a lot closer than everyone thinks. I spoke at a UBS investor conference yesterday, and I, I said I think a lot of these technologies will come out at the end of 23. You'll start seeing more commercialized pro products. Anyone in the audience familiar with OpenAI? Anyone? So if you go play, go to OpenAI, register an account, and you'll be able to see what, what AI is available today. There's the, the newest one launched is called ChatGPT. And you can have a back and forth conversation asking what's the fastest mammal in the world and have, it has memory. So you don't even realize you're not talking to a human. Prior to this, an, another platform was launched called Stable Diffusion, which is generating images. You type it text of what you want and it generates an image for you. Think about that in creating advertisements that are out there. And Stable Diffusion is, is going bananas on how, many, on how many people are playing with it and the possibilities. So you can say, I'd like a scene set in Poland with a female and a male. They're having a, a joyful time and they're going to be holding a Coca-Cola. And then bam, it makes the ad for you instantly right there based on the words that you do it. The more you play with it, the more real you see it is. And it's shocking. And so I think where... The future is going, what's not available today is the creation of the advertisement. Think about how much money is wasted in licensing music, hiring actors, getting a set, just to create an ad. That's why the production costs are so expensive for most advertisements. But now with these artificial intelligence leading the way, uh, you can actually generate your own music. It creates brand new music for you based on the style that you want. It creates artificial people, so you don't need to pay anyone to be an actor, and puts it all together in a storytelling format and executes it. Now, is it perfect today? No, but it's shocking how good it is when you play with these technologies. Uh, Joe, what does that mean for you, right? <laughs> you are, you know, you have a team, you have clients, right? As, as you hear all of that and the possibility that these new technologies bring, what does that actually you know, mean to you and your team, but then ultimately to the marketers that are your clients? Yeah, sure. So this is a really good question. I oversee a, I'm overseeing a team of around 50 traders. So will this impact my team? For sure. Do I worry about their job security? No. So that about maybe... 15 years ago, when I was a trader, my job uh, responsibility was totally different from what my traders are doing now. 
a lot of automation we have seen and optimization we have seen have made my team's job much, much easier. 15 years ago, I even could not go out to have dinner with my friends because I need to monitor pacing. So, <laughs> yeah. So Work like, dedication. Like my manager would call me when I had my lunch. Your campaign was over pacing. You need to um, stop the, this campaign right away. Not anymore. It's all automated. We have AI solution to make sure all the op- optimization can be done in real time and all of the budget and uh, media spend can be spent in a very smart, smart way. Um, however, what can my team do? So there are a lot of things that can, still cannot be done by uh, AI, and I don't foresee this can be done in the near future. One is the thought leadership. There are so many technologies and uh, um, AI solutions uh, in the market, and there are new policies, regulations, uh, new trends, we need to make sure that we all capture all the opportunities for our clients. We need thought leadership to analyze all these trends and provide the right consultation to our clients. On top of that, uh, our team is also responsible for um, a lot of insights um, and the uh, premium marketplace negotiation because now we have not just remnant inventory in the um, DSPs, we have all these premium publishers for example, Group M has negotiated the premium marketplace, and that's all based on our cherry picking and selection and to make sure we have the right media for our clients. So all of these things will be done by human, but with the autonomous advertising, we will have more time to do that. To do that. So Group M's vision is uh, we make advertising work better for people, which means the audiences or consumers will have uh, fewer annoying ads, but more ads relevant to their life and their needs and their interests. So that's what, uh, what our goal is. And uh, we will, we're seeing this happening now. It's not like several decades ago, everyone are seeing the same ads. Now we have dynamic creative, different people with different interests are seeing different ads. And maybe you even don't see an ad because you are not relevant to this product. And all of this are make our digital advertising so amazing and so attractive. And again, we have a lot of things we need to do. So far from perfect yet. Yeah, I mean, think as a programmatic trader, what she just said, I couldn't go to lunch because I was worried about pacing. The level of anxiety programmatic traders feel is very high when you're managing campaigns. When I started buying, I had the same anxiety. A customer's campaign was running, even though I'm the CEO. There was only 10 of us, so I was in there managing campaigns too. Your level of anxiety and having an artificial intelligence platform be able to remove that anxiety for traders where you know someone's looking at it, it's a computer, I'm going to get notified if we're not pacing, but I at least feel good that someone's on it so I can actually go to lunch. So the actual, you know, everyone worries about their jobs uh, in, in, in one respect with AI, but the truth is humans are needed more and more and more. We have labor shortages in almost every single type of role not just in advertising, across the economy as a whole. So to be able to free up human labor to do things that are of higher value is really what we should all be doing. I think both of you made such great points there. And, and Zha, what really stuck out to me was, was your motto, if you could repeat it for me, around people. Yeah, people. Yeah, and, and you, you know, that, that ethos that I think we often forget when we're talking about technology and ad tech, programmatic, all of these things, that it is about people. And sometimes I think with that, that layer of thinking about, you know, these conversations around technology, that at the end of the day, you know, this is about connecting and engaging with people. And so what really stands out to me is that um, by giving the traders the ability to change their jobs, it actually allows the marketer, right, who's the, ultimately the person we're serving here, mm-hmm. to get closer to their consumer. Um, and I think that, you know, particularly in 2023, you know, marketers need to be really focused around people and engaging people as, as humans. So to me, this actually feels like we're, we're using technology to get closer to people. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, think of the data sets we use. We used to use anonymous identifiers called cookies. Everyone had a cookie. We track you across the web. At at Viant, we created something called people-based data, which everyone now knows today. Name, address, phone number, email. We talk about first-party data. 
CRM data. We're, we're talking about real people that are real customers of the end marketer. So to be able to actually ingest people-based data and understand what that means from an advertising perspective on where we should place the ads, what are the relevant interests and topics to this group of individuals that's buying this product or service, that's, that's where I think the, the game has changed. And you really have to get out of the, the mindset. 15 years ago, we talked all about anonymity online. And I think that's something that, that has changed quite a bit. The internet is, I don't think the average person 20 years ago thought they could be identified online. It was fully anonymous. I could surf the web and, I, and no one knew it was me. But I think most people today now recognize with social platforms, logging in, of course, this service on the other end actually knows me and they need to personalize that experience too. So even in the data related to programmatic, we've moved to people-based. So important. Um, talking about cookies, and as we think about a, a, you know, all this conversation about co a cookie-less advertising world, um, Jai, I know you have some, some, some really important thoughts around this and um, really thinking about that, the identifier, not necessarily the cookie. So mm -hmm. would love uh, you know, for you to talk a little bit about how you're preparing at Group M um, for what I think the, tr the industry traditionally calls a, a cookie-less environment, but, but you have a different way that you think about it that gets to what Tim's talking about, about that, I, that identifier. <laughs> yeah, sure. So Anne and I were talking about um, a, a funny story. So my team was developing an a ID-based dashboard for our clients. The dashboard can track user, uh, our clients' media spend by ID-based media spend and ID-less media spend. So at that time, I was presenting this to our Group M leaders. And I said, okay, this is our cookie dashboard. And they said, cookie, do you include IDs? Then okay, yes, this includes both cookies and device IDs because both of them are personal, very sensitive personal data. And then actually at Group M, um, we are very serious about identification. So um, we strictly, we call this ID solution, not cookie-less solution anymore, mm -hmm. because uh, we think ID is a broader term, including both cookies and other personal, sensitive personal data. So with that in mind, uh, Group M has three areas what we are focusing on. The first is our thought leadership in the ID area. Uh, we have an ID committee which is responsible to look into all of the regulations, industry trends, and the product, products in the market and how can we prepare our clients for the ID solution. Second is our products. Currently, we have a very comprehensive evaluation and consultation products. Um, two things I can uh, mention. One is called IDX. IDX is a um, consultation tool which can evaluate our clients' Um, uh, ID readiness for our future proof readiness when actually ID goes away and uh, understand how risky they are with their first party data and their media strategy. And with that, we will build um, solutions for them. And uh, um, the other is the ID dashboard I just mentioned. We monitor our clients' spend by ID solution in real time so they understand, okay, maybe 90% of my current media stipend are, are, are um, high-risk ID-based. So they need to rethink their media strategies. And then we also have a product called a Choreograph um, Audience Platform, which is um, responsible for analyzing our client's data and uh, other kind of uh, related data to make sure that we can analyze, measure, and uh, um, activate them for our clients in a future-proof way. Um, the third area is our um, um, activation. So everything I was talking about is about consultation, thought leadership, evaluation, then how can we put them in media strategy for our clients. Um, there are four areas that we're working on, like uh, contextual validated data, API, um, um, topic API, all these things, we combine them and always find the best solution for our clients. So um, about two years ago when... Apple was talking about the ID restriction, ATT um, uh, restrictions they have, and the new policy. And uh, my client at the time was, sorry, <laughs> was, was very, very scared. They went to me and asked me for a solution. And then um, I can very confidently 
tell them that we have all these suite and package for you guys, so you don't need to worry about this. You just need to make sure you、um, follow all these guidelines. Thank you so much.、Uh, we're getting short on time, so、I、have one final question, Tim. You mentioned that autonomous advertising is is not that far off, a lot closer、um, than we probably all anticipate.、Um, what steps? Can marketers and advertisers and agencies start taking today to get ready for that? Should they be testing new things? Like what? What? What can we do now as we enter into 2023 to get ready for for the future? Yeah, I mean, like all things, it's it's testing the tools and what's new、uh, out there. Like right now, inside of Viant, we work with the engineering school at Chapman University. And we're predicting whether the ad's going to work. We're starting with banner ads. Whether the ad's going to work before it actually runs. Why waste a bunch of media, which is the heft of the of the spend, when an artificial intelligence engine can tell you if this is a good ad or a bad ad? And so we have students feeding all the training data set. We play with it, and before an ad even actually runs, now we can predict if this is a good ad or a bad ad. If it's going to meet the client's goals on click through rate or on. Moving the needle in sales, whatever it may be, both in sales or click through rate, whatever the metric turns out to be, but being able to play with these predictive elements and getting comfortable with them. In the end, people don't adopt technology that they're not comfortable with, and the only way to get comfortable with something is to spend time with it. So go to ChatGPT, have your own conversation with it, register, start playing with it, and you're going to start to see what's possible.、Uh, and, but I think the biggest thing, like everything, any new technology that comes out. You've got to test it, play with it, and that's what makes you get comfortable with it. Where you can, in the future, rely on it. And I think we're busy trying to build the end-to-end -end autonomous advertising, where it does everything for you. Even traffics a campaign because we love traders, and no one likes to be able to have lunch. And no one likes to traffic a campaign.、Um, so I think that's that's the the, the long-term goal. But we have so many elements. Like, is it a good creative? Do I think this audience segment is relevant? Just going piece by piece, and that's where you get comfortable. And I think 2023 is about playing with all these tools. Getting, or excuse me, 2023 will be about playing all these tools, and 24 will be about actually automating what we do、uh, with the programmatic traders today. So exciting! So I know we have a couple of takeaways. I'll let you to share your takeaways for the audience. You want to go first?、Um, so my takeaway is autonomous. Advertising is very important and it's、um, people-based. So、uh, in the future, we will see more efficiency and precise targeting,、uh, which make our advertising more meaningful for our clients. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that that、uh, I talked about before it's all about technology. It's it's important that to everyone understands you're not in the advertising business. You're in the technology business with deep roots in advertising. That's how I, I kind of describe Viant. We're, this is all about technology. Everyone is a tech company today, and you've got to know the expertise of advertising. So when you when you think about、uh, placing campaigns,、uh, ingesting data, all these types of、uh, elements that are a part of programmatic advertising, you got to think about things differently. You don't need to track every single device in every location that they go, every website that they visit, and know every product that they purchased. I think that's where we came from, and we need to get to a spot where we trust. I don't know everything about you. I just need to know something about you so I can drive an interest. And I think, as an industry as a whole, getting away from these、uh, pixels and cookies and moving more to other proxies that are still relevant at Viant, we believe in households、uh, that are that are big because that's where a lot of influence happens. But I think, as an industry as a whole, you've got to get comfortable moving away from tracking and targeting in, not just individuals but their devices. It's even more granular. Than an individual, and so we've got a lot of of room to run there. But I'm very excited about where it's going to go. And the more we adopt artificial intelligence, the more we don't have to answer the how do you do that. So, like if I walk in and say we have the Viant household ID, the first question out of anyone is, "Tell me how it's constructed, piece by piece, step by step." With AI, you don't actually know how it came to the conclusion that it came. You don't actually get the step one, then step two, then step three. It's a predictive element. The computer generates it, and you got to get comfortable with that as well, which is different than understanding each and every step on how it does it.、Um, so I think we have time for one question. If we have any audience questions, hand shot up there in the back. Very enthusiastic to ask their question. It's a good question. <laughs> 
Hi, this really interesting. Um, thank you, um, Shannon from Google. Um, curious about generative models as you see it with, you know, encroaching on some tasks that might be a little bit more personal, like there's a, you know, thought leadership, right, is an important thing that people will be continuing to look to humans for. But um, what are your thoughts on some of the areas where, um, you know, uh, when it comes to creative, right, like generative models creating the creative, what are the kinds of things that really can't be relied on the technology to do and that we can really allow people who are creating that creative continue to, um, you know, shine with those um, ideas? Yep. Really good question. But when I think of what's possible and creative, think in streaming TV, you're watching a show. Why isn't the ad relevant to the show? So if we're selling Coca-Cola, we'll just use the figurative advertiser that everyone discusses. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think of contextual, it takes on a whole different re realm where the ad can be generated with characters that may be integrated in the show, like this concept of ad breaks, ad pods, ad slots. I think all of this goes away. And it, uh, I mean, it's off topic, but my brother and I are the founders of Zumo, a free ad supported streaming service. And so when you think of what's available on that content being streamed out, you know the end viewer, you know what they've seen in the show, you know... This idea of telling stories that are longer than 30 seconds, of integrating the ad. If you're a content owner today, the biggest problem you have is when an ad break hits, people change the channel. They stop watching when ads come on. And this is a behavior that all of us know. We all run to the restroom or go get something to eat. So I think it, it's all about monetizing every second of streaming if you're a content owner. And to do that, it's putting the ads in the content. And to do that, we need artificial intelligence, which makes that ad or the product relevant in the actual show. And so we see this taking off in the future and things like the metaverse when you're playing games, new ad formats will be created, which are objects within a video file. And the internet gives incredible capabilities that are, we know what the consumer's watching. Now with generative capabilities, we can have a like person that may have been in the show a season ago or something come back and, and do this. So storytellers are always gonna be important but how we do it in real time, injected in a video feed that's going out in a stream, that's the, I think, the hard part that, that, that we're at. But more and more, I think the 30-second spot can become 10 minutes when you have a whole show to try and get a concept across of, of the actual ad product. So I never worry about the humans. Original thought is what AI can't do. It can read the internet memorize the internet, and if you ask it a question, spit you back the answer, like I do. If I read a book last night, I can repeat it to you today. But ask me in a month, I probably forgot. Computers never forget, and their ability to learn is incredible. And so the only piece that humans need to do is with what gets spit out, you've got to create original thought. It is You nailed it on the head of what AI fails on is original thought, and I think that's where humans thrive. Thank you so much. Um, I know we're, we're out of time. I think the, my big takeaway for everyone is let's test and try and play with these new technologies in 2023 um, and be ready for autonomous advertising and in full force. In it's 24. exciting. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.